Welcome viewers back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, that is I. Today I'd like to deal with a topic entitled Striking the Root. And before we get into that, uh, we have started on my show, The Preaching Humanist, a new format. After my message on a particular topic, I'll have the Atheist Roundtable with my co-hosts and guest hosts to analyze and, and get into depth about the topics that I bring forth in the importance of atheist activism. There's a quote from Henry David Thoreau back in the 1800s, the 19th century. There are a thousand hacking away at the branches of evil for one who is striking at the root. This will be the premise of our new format on the Preaching Humanist Show. We will attempt to motivate others to see the importance of finding the root of evil and attacking that. The question is, was Richard Dawkins wrong or was he right? Well, in his book, The God Delusion, How Religion is the Root of All Evil, was Christopher Hitchens correct in his wonderful book, God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything? Here's a quote from Thomas Jefferson. I love Tom Jefferson quotes. Now keep in mind that this quote was about 200 to 220 years ago. And let me give you the quote and then I'll explain. It does me no injury for my neighbor to say, there are 20 gods or no gods. What he was saying was, it doesn't matter to me, keep in mind, this is 220 years ago. It doesn't matter to me if my neighbor has believes in 20 gods or zero gods. It doesn't matter to me. He goes on to say, it neither picks my pocket nor breaks my leg. Now, does belief in a god, do these religions break our leg and pick our pocket? Now, if Thomas Jefferson were living here today in the year 2018, I think his quote would be a little bit different. I think he would say, it does pick our pocket to a certain point and break our legs. Now, not literally, but there is some damage done from these supernatural beliefs. So the premise of my show will be, is it important only to hack away at the branches of evil? Now, it's interesting to know when you hack away at branches and you find something that is detrimental to humanity, you can hack away those branches, but something's going to happen. Those branches always grow back. Now, we must find the root cause of problems, the causation of major problems. That's called the root. There are secular groups nationwide, worldwide, that do wonderful things for the movement hacking away at branches. Oh, hell, I do the hacking away at branches. Feeding homeless people, doing other good charitable things. In these secular groups, we do good things. But is that going and striking at the root? Is it going to the causation of the problems that we have in our country and worldwide? Now, my question is, in America, let's deal with the United States. In America, would any one of these topics that I'm going to list and what we will discuss in the future on the Atheist Roundtable. I will give a topic and then I'll have my co-host talk about it in more detail. I'll lay the foundation like a skeleton and they're going to add some meat to the bones, right? So in America, would any one of these topics be an issue if it were not for I'm going to get a little flack on this, but that's okay. If it were not for Christianity and the Bible in our country, the pervasiveness of Christianity in our government, billboards and signs everywhere, churches on every corner, goodness can only be obtained through God, like last week when we were out in a small rural town holding up our atheist signs. Guy walks by looks at me, points his finger at me, and says, you can't do good, only God is good. And then, of course, I answered him, you're wrong. We just got back from feeding homeless people. Your book is wrong. We can be good. So let me list a couple of these topics. Would these be an issue if it were not for the Bible and Christianity in our very Christian 
culture in this country. Number one, teaching evolution versus creationism in our classrooms. Would this be a problem? Would this be an issue if it were not for Christianity and the Bible in our country? I'm going to say probably not, maybe a little bit. Number two, what about women's rights? What about the fight against abortion? What about pro-lifers? Now, this morning, driving my girlfriend's car to the shop to be serviced early this morning, I went by Planned Parenthood. I noticed there were a line of believers out there holding up signs of baby killers, <laughs> of pro-life signs. Would the fight against women's rights and abortion, would it be an issue if it were not for the Bible and Christianity and our culture? I'm going to say not too much, probably not. What about LGBT rights? Where does this disdain and hatred come from in our very Christian culture country toward people that are gay or lesbian? Where does it come from? Now, we will discuss this in the future on the Atheist Roundtable. I can take Leviticus chapter 20 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to say the majority of this hatred toward people that are gay or lesbian comes from the Bible. And if it weren't a major uh, message to our country, it wouldn't be much of an issue. What about religion and politics? That's a no-brainer. What we see now in the Republican Party is a saturation, a permeation from the Christian right in politics. Our Constitution makes no mention of God, Jesus, the Bible, or any religion. It's a secular Constitution. So if it were not for Christianity, politics would be different in our country. Stem cell research, another no-brainer, right? Where does the fight come from against science, against the progressivism and advancing ahead in science and stem cell research? I'm going to say, is this just the branch or is the root cause from these religions, from the books that are anti-human? And I talk about that quite a bit. The Bible and the Quran or belief systems and religions that are anti-human nature. You can't progress and be good without God belief. That's what they teach. One other, climate change. Now, I'm not saying religion is the main root cause of this, but I'm telling you, my experience with most people that deny climate change, deny overwhelming data and scientific evidence, there's a correlation between extreme right-wing conservatism and Christianity in our country. Would any of these be an issue in our country if it were not for the Bible and Christianity? We're going to discuss these topics in the future. Quickly, I'm going to give a, um, a little analogy here. I'm a personal trainer by trade. I quit preaching, oh gosh, 25, 30 years ago. I've done several sales jobs since then. The last 12 years, I've been a full-time personal trainer. I have certifications. So I know a little bit about fitness and health. I've been doing it for over 40 years, fitness and health. Now, I know in my business that many of my clients have shoulder impairments, knee impairments, hips, and ankles. The areas in the body called joints where muscles, ligaments, tendons, bones all connect, right? And as you age, like most of my clients in my age, 60 and over, tend to have these impairments. Now, the analogy I'd like to make about we can hack the branches, relieve human suffering temporarily. There's nothing wrong with getting some temporary relief, but these branches grow back. Or do we go to the root cause of the problem that we have? So in physiology, when someone has a shoulder impairment, the choices are made. You can go to a chiropractor, get some temporary relief. Is it the root cause of the impairments? You can go to an acupuncturist, someone who's going to put pins in you, which is that Chinese ancient method of relieving pain and stimulating the nervous system. One of my clients is a retired physician, and I asked him what he thought. He and many other medical professionals say it's these two things are borderline pseudoscience, and I don't want to offend anybody. What I'm saying is, yes, it works temporarily. You can hack away these little branches, you can alleviate these problems, but is it the root cause? In my business, when someone has a knee impairment, a shoulder impairment, keep going. I tell my clients, go ahead and go to your chiropractor, go, to an ac go get some acupuncture, and even my 
retired physician who's a client of mine. He goes to and gets acupuncture occasionally. He knows it lasts for a couple weeks, but it's not the root cause. There is a way to go to the root and deal and strike the root to alleviate their pain and so forth. Now, in my business, I would recommend you go to the root. The root cause, we can use physical therapy. Physical therapy goes a little more to the root. I've had clients of mine who started training with me who have sore necks, sore shoulders, and knees. And after a few months of training, the symptoms disappear. Why? The root cause was muscular balances, weak muscles. So through stretching and through uh, increase in muscular strength in these areas, their pain has gone away. My point is, we can continue to hack away at the branches of evil. That's fine. We all do it. That's good. It helps. But do we want to just do that? Or let's also be like the one who goes to the root cause and strikes at the root. The premise of my show is, yes, these major religions, and especially here in America, I, at my age, and I've been an atheist for many, many, many years, going on 30 years now, I would say the majority of these topics that we will discuss, one of the main causes of these problems that we have stems from these primitive belief systems called religion, especially Christianity. Please do not misunderstand me. I'm not saying it's the only root cause. Now, Dawkins said it's the root of all evil. Is it the root of all evil? Well, I wouldn't say so, but it's right up there as a major, major player. And yes, removing and hacking away and striking the root is much better than hacking at the branches of evil. So stay tuned for the next coming upper episodes and the Atheist Roundtable when we will discuss this particular topic in a few weeks. Thanks for watching The Preaching Humanists with David Oliverio, where no God is required and the good life is guided by reason and motivated by love. Have a wonderful day.